Well, hello there, y'all, and howdy, folks, and welcome to day one, week one of uh, Ahsoka-mas, my Ahsoka Tano vlogmas style journey on how I'm making Ahsoka Tano. Man, that's, that's kind of a lame title. <laughs> But anyways, as I mentioned in my last video, if you all watched, I will be making Ahsoka Tano, obviously, and, uh, but I'm going to do it a bit differently. I'm going to bring you weekly videos that are vlog style videos of what I'm doing each day during the week while we make her. And today is December 1st. Happy December. Happy Christmas season. Happy Vlogmas for you YouTubers out there who do that still. This is my first time actually doing something like that. So this, these videos are going to be a little unfiltered. You're going to see stuff besides Ahsoka, whatever I'm doing that day, who I'm with, where I'm going, what I'm eating currently. Pizza, leftover pizza. And um, yeah, so but the by the end of me making Ahsoka, and if this vlogmas style goes well, I will make a big super cut of all the different way of all the different things that I've made for her. So if people aren't interested in seeing my shenanigans that I do on the weekends, you guys can just check out the super cut of Ahsoka cosplay bill that I'll have much later on. But here I am up in my studio. It is after work. So majority of the stuff you'll be seeing is me post work. Um, getting ready to start Ahsoka. Now, meeting dinner, I'm kind of thinking some things over because since my last video that I put out this past Saturday, I've had some thoughts on some changes that I'm gonna be making with Ahsoka, specifically fabric types and shapes of things. So, oh, let me take a bite of my pizza. <laughs> One of the first things I wanna talk about is the fact that a lot of people are agreeing, and I agree with this too, that her outfit does not have tabards. That her tunic is one piece with like a little vest that's sewn on. Considering all of the seam work that's happening up here and on her back with the tee back, it's all together. So I think I'm gonna change my design up a little bit on the tunic build. I also realize that the front and back OB pieces, I guess, uh, underneath her leather belt are completely different fabrics that I did not get. Um, <laughs> I think I might alter my cloak fabric up a little bit for that. Not too sure on that yet, but um, it's an evolving, evolving cosplay. And the more I look at it, the more complicated this freaking thing is. It'll be okay. We will survive this. We will survive this. So um, I'm going to show you guys some of the fabric that I've purchased already for Ahsoka. Um, and uh, tonight's major uh, agenda is the muslin mock-ups. I will be muslin mock-upping this entire thing because there's just too many corrections and too many styles and design seam work things that I'm probably going to be still discovering as we're working on this. So I'm not diving into the fabric cutting yet, especially since I'm going to have to dye some things as well. So um, that is tonight's agenda is some muslin mock-ups cutting out some patterns and then Later on, I have a really cool, fun uh, little interview with my friend Tom on his Facebook channel, on his Facebook page, just about some fun things and talk about my book and things like that later, so I might grab a little snap of that. Um, but yeah, that's tonight. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing the rest of the week. It's going to be a little bit all up in the air. So this is what the vlogging style stuff is, right? Okay, here we go. Before I get started on cleaning and getting into Ahsoka, there's a couple things I'd like to talk to you guys about. One is, oh my god! Y'all bought so many books. <laughs> I was not expecting uh, for a lot of my books to be selling out from my website. Thank you all if you bought one. If you haven't bought one yet, I have 10 copies left. Yep, only 10 that I can send to you with my signature and bookmark on them are in them. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of order filling, which is usually not what I do. Um, but thank you for that. Also, another one is the fact that I, I understand um, that I should have been working on something else at this time. And <laughs> I'll show you what that would have been. So, 
originally we were going to do my vlogmas over my build for Rose Dawson or Rose Do It Bikata from Titanic. I had the fabric all printed here and over here. Actually, just these two. Um, ready to go, but <clears throat> this girl had to come in and be like, no, you're doing me first. So that will happen. It will just be after Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah. All right, so materials I've bought for Ahsoka so far, that includes this stretchy knit that I'm going to try to dye as dark as I possibly can for her pants. And I did buy this at Joann's. It is a definitely two-way, four is, not really, it's a two-way stretch knit. And that's what I found that's gonna work because that is patterned harem pants. Here is my pattern that I'm gonna use for it. Probably altered a whole, whole lot. I bought some beads for the beaded area that I thought were more silvery metallic than like white. But on further investigation, it looks like they're more white and wooden. So, we might use these, we might not. I don't know. So I got this, I got a bunch of muslin to do all of my, all of my patterning. And then here is the cloak fabric that I have so far. Okay, here it is. Um, this is what I got for her cloak and it is 100% upholstery fabric coming in hot, like my normal upholstery fabric does for a lot of my cloaks and things. It's very soft, it is just tweed. Um, I might dye it darker, I'm probably not going to because it's a ton of fabric and I'm just gonna use it for a cloak. It's got this side for an option to use uh, versus this side, but I believe I'm gonna have this side, but I'm not gonna make her cloak till towards the end because I need that measurement for how tall my headpiece is so for the pattern so that is my cloak fabric that I got once again got it at Joann's now begins the cutting out patterns and draping muslin on a dress form montage so I hope you enjoy it Well, I thought the pants would be too small and not billowy enough. These things are huge. It's the pattern. Foot for reference. Yes. I think they will have plenty of billowiness. Well, hello there, folks. Please excuse my appearance. I just got out of the shower and I'm still not used to this vlogging thing just yet. Um, one of two things. Also today is December 3rd and I do have progress on Ahsoka. I'll show you all that here. And as well, I have fabric coming in from my online stores that I bought to show you guys of the fabric choices that I'm gonna be using for her. So there is important things I'm going to talk about besides the fact that I just didn't record yesterday because I put up my Christmas decorations because life needed lights in my house. So uh, tonight we will be working more on Ahsoka's pants that have gotten somewhere. <laughs> These are the Berta pattern harem pants that I showed you all this pattern specifically. Um, I haven't made any alterations to this. I literally just cut out the biggest size and I put it together in muslin because I knew that would be a really good place to start. And so far I dig it. Um, 
Here's how it looks so far. Basic hair and pants. <laughs> it's also extremely hard to work with these on my dress form because my dress form is for dresses, not necessarily pants. So I have that hard, very low crotch right there. So I think these are gonna look better on me than on the mannequin. Um, I'm also realizing that the pattern that I bought is weird. They have like a side panel on these that only is on one side and it looks really strange and I don't like it. So I made two side panels. If you all decide to do this pattern for her, you'll know what I mean. It's weird. But I'm also not making this an elastic waistband. I'm going to put a zipper in it because I want pleats instead of gathers. So FYI, if you guys make harem pants and you want to get kind of a screen accurate with Ahsoka, I believe those are pleats and her pants, not gathers. If they are, they're gathers. You do you. Don't care. If you want elastic, good. You do you. But they're very heavily gathered here in the front and I'm not sure in the back. Um, I don't have a lot of gathers in the back yet because I haven't put them on yet. So this is what it looks like turned inside out. And then I'm going to, I probably will do gathers and elastic at the bottom because that's not going to be seen. But uh, so right now I'm going to add in a temporary waistband, cut a slit in one side so I can get in them. And then I'm going to try them on and let's see how they look like. Okay, so I do like these pants. Um, I think the only alteration I'm going to do to them is to add a three inch wide side length of whatever the sides of these are, um, just to get some more pleats in the back because I like the shape, but I don't have a lot of pleats in the back because my booty. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. However, I do really, I really dig these pants um, for Ahsoka job Berta patterns okay so here is the final fitting of the pants sans waistband because I screwed it up um, I really dig it I really dig these pants they're gonna be different to get used to because I feel like there's a lot of bulge here <laughs> which is strange to me but I feel like they're very similar to what she wears in the show the pleats are a little off from what you where she was in the show, but honestly, this was just trying to see if this pattern would work and if I needed to add any more pleats here and there. But I think it's good. Yeah, fits my butt, fits my thighs. I feel like I can do a lot of really cool stances with it, you know. So yeah, pants mock-up is done. Okay, before I move on to the next thing, I wanted to talk about the fabric I got in. Yay! This is gonna be her tunic fabric. So this is pretty accurate to the color that you're seeing here to what they actually are. It's a slightly bluer gray linen, which I'm fine with, a charcoal, and then a charcoal linen. This is going to be the outside vest part. This is gonna be the tunic part. And then I'm gonna use these probably for her armbands. Probably, we'll see, we'll see how this goes, but I'm very happy with the fabric that I got from, these are from fabric.com. I'll put the links below if you'd like to get them, but I'm very happy with the choices that I made here. So, yay! Now the next thing we gotta do is to come over here and now we have to dye this. Oh boy. So I said that I think I'm going to do dye the pants fabric next. I think the next thing that I'm going to do is keep patterning the tunic part. Since I have the muslin and I'm in the muslin patterning mood now, so I think I'm just going to stow, go ahead and drape that on a mannequin. Um, and then by dye tomorrow, then start the dyeing process.
Okay, so hi folks. And I know by now you guys are probably having questions about how I draped this and why am I using orange tape? Um, for those of you who have never draped a pattern on a dress form or done anything like that, this is, uh, I don't wanna call it fashion tape, but it's just really thin tape. And it's meant to mark different shapes and different um, lines of seam work on the mannequin. So you can just drape muslin directly on top of it and draw the shapes that you are going to be doing. Um, this stuff is meant for more intricate seam work with whatever you're doing. Um, I've used it like one or two other times. I don't use it a whole lot, but I figured it was a good time to use it for this since it's got the tee back and it's got the tunic in the front. And then once I'm done with the back pattern, I'm going to mark the areas for her little vesty thing that's gonna go over the tabards, but I think that's just gonna be one overall uh, tunic. But um, it's really handy if you wanna get into more patterning and draping things. I'll talk about it in another video and maybe we can do some examples about it, but I'm making uh, they're called slopers, which is basically the, the draft beginner pattern of whatever you're going to be doing. But this is this is using uh, the tape as a marker. And then basically I just, like you saw me do, add the muslin on top and then just trace with a Sharpie marker over top. The key with this tape is to have it a color that will show through your draping fabric. So orange is perfect for that. So when I remove the fabric the muslin I will have my pattern and I just need to shore up make it nice and pretty and then move it to paper and then move it to fabric so that is a very very short explanation on how to use this this fashion tape um, actually I think this is like an automotive detailing tape and uh, they're on Amazon you can get it but it's basically like it's, it's marking tape for a dress form. Um, if you ever watch Project Runway, they use that a lot on Project Runway. They will, because a lot of their um, gowns and outfits they make are, have really crazy seam work. And it's basically, it cuts out a lot of work from trying to drape it here on a basic sloper and then trying to draft it on a table with measurements and, and things like that. So it's definitely a more organic way to pattern but it's my preferred method so I have the tunic pattern figured out now I'm going to do the little vesty thingy um, patterns and then we're going to move to more mock-ups and then eventually we'll get to the fabric I promise it'll be interesting just stay tuned kids Okay, y'all, that's it for the week one of making Ahsoka Tano. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's a bit weird than what I normally do, but if you stay with me per week, each one of these week weeks, I will show you my entire work progress, obviously, of Ahsoka. So 
This week was the mock-ups and the patterning, and I'm continuing on that as well as dyeing fabric this next coming week. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked this format, let me know down below. I'd like to hear what you have to say and if I should keep going on this type of this type of uh, format to show you all Ahsoka. So I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe to my channel and a like on this video, of course, if you enjoyed it. And until next time, bye y'all.